Hello, Fantastic Beast fans, or should I say Fantastic Whovians? How many of you cross fandoms into tortoise territory? If so, I hope you'll really enjoy the theory I have for you today. Join me and other Fantastic Beast fans here on the Beast Chaser Forum as we uncover the secrets, discover what's coming first, and play along with Rowling's newest game. Yesterday, Universe Harry Potter, a French fan site, released an image and theory on Twitter that I found quite intriguing. They picked out a discarded piece of jewelry left on the floor in the postcard scene and theorized that it was Tina's locket, which is an awesome catch and a great bit of sleuthing. I've linked to their tweet in the description below. They've got an informative feed and you should definitely follow. However, when I blew up and lightened the image, I wondered if that gold metal object was Tina's locket or something else, perhaps red herring. It seems too round and a bit flatter than Tina's oval, lumpy locket. Plus, the locket has a hinge on the side that the object on the carpet seems to be missing, whereas the gold object seems to have an engraved design that Tina's locket doesn't. Could it be a pocket watch instead? It jumped out at me because as a child, I was always fascinated with my grandfathers. During this film's time period, men and some women, especially of a certain status, wore pocket watch all the time. Also, as I previously discussed in the comments, I don't think this is a Goldstein apartment. Though it's similar in decoration, many homes on both sides of the Atlantic would have shared similar decor of the time. Compare the windows and curtains from the first film to this. The Goldsteins had double windows with heavier curtains at both ends. The one in the postcard home seems to be bay. Plus, the carpet patterns are not the same. So I wondered, who would be most likely to wear a pocket watch among Newt's acquaintances? Theseus was the first person who came to mind, so I scoured the few images we have of him to find any hints of it, and this is what I found. Look, there, just the hint of the chain that would attach to the watch stored in his vest, like you see Newt's vest pocket here. But that's not all I found. Look at Jacob. He's wearing one, too. I think Jacob would be especially proud of a good quality pocket watch to show his new higher financial status. And then there's Grindelwald's. It's possible his chain links to a watch, but much more likely, as Suvi Holm researched and told me months ago, that they are charivari, a type of silver talisman or charm worn with letter hosen. It's curious to me that this initial image of Crimes of Grindelwald shows the hint of a pocket watch in four men, and then we get a discarded one in the first teaser trailer. Rowling is really scattering those breadcrumbs along the trail. I'd like to explore two possibilities, Jacob versus Theseus, and see what you think. First up, Jacob. In the comments of my prior trailer post, Wall Does made some excellent observations on Queenie. I quoted him in an article I wrote for the Rolling Library, linked in the description below. Wall says, in the trailer released by IMAX, Queenie is in the streets of Paris and she looks confused. She doesn't know what to do. A man's voice says at this exact moment that Newt will have to pick a side seems that Queenie will have a bigger role and a big decision because the camera moves around her from one side to another, a camera move which clearly might suggest that she may have to choose her own side in a wizarding world more divided. One thing I'm wondering, considering the juxtaposition of the two sisters on the lookout for someone else, are they hiding from each other? Is it possible that Queenie is acting upon insight from her legitimacy that puts her at cross purposes with her own sister, or that Tina must be careful to keep a distance from Queenie so that her sister cannot read her thoughts. One more thing, did you catch a hint of leg movement with that angel behind Tina? Thanks to Suey Home for pointing it out to me. Watch it again. This time, see if you notice the right hand also pulling at the gown or cape. 
A statue coming to life might be a cross fandom nod to Doctor Who's haunting and beloved blink, where statues creep toward the unsuspecting when they blink to send them back in time and eat their present energy. So, is Tina stalking someone or being stalked? Which brings me back to Jacob. If Queenie has gone to Paris undercover and is either spying on her sister or trying to avoid being discovered by her sister, might she have sent Jacob a postcard informing him? And then he, alarmed, set off afterward in such a hurry that he left his pocket watch behind. The biggest negative I see for this idea is that it seems to introduce a lot of transatlantic crossings into the film for Newt, when we know that apparating overseas is not favored, especially when carrying a trunk full of magical beasts. So that brings me back to my original idea that it could be Theseus. I could well imagine Newt having easy entry to his brother's home, plus he'd be on the same side of the Atlantic. As head of the aura department, who had been previously assigned to capture Grindelwald, Theseus might find himself the target of a kidna kidnapping or even assassination plot. Could Theseus have been reading this postcard at the time of an attack? Could his pocket watch have come off in the struggle? And who then? sent the postcard. Could it be from Lita? The biggest problem with this theory, however, is that it would seem to set Theseus off before the encounter between the Ministry and Dumbledore, when, as the Minister points out, Newt has already left for Paris and Theseus is standing right behind the Minister. Trailers can be deceptive, however, for timing, and the pocket watch being Theseus's could set up a rescue operation between the two brothers that could culminate in that graveyard scene displayed at the end of the trailer. Since the tattered bits of postcard were left lying on the floor, I suspect it more from anger than trying to hide evidence. Jacob's a happy person, though I would suspect if Queenie were in danger, he'd get angry very quickly. We haven't yet seen Theseus's temperament, but I'd imagine an aura who rose to the tops of the department is quite capable of some dark emotions. And isn't it interesting the positioning of these two couples to hint at opposing conflicts between them? Let me throw one more wrinkle into this theory and go back to Jacob. I've been wondering about this scene in the trailer and Jacob's odd placement behind the trunk. He looks disheveled and a bit wet, as if he's just popped up out of the rain. I know we did not see the trunk used like this in the first film, but could it serve as a portal or a port key? If you will remember, Newt did a switcheroo at the very end of Fantastic Beast One with Jacob's trunk when he left him the case full of Alchemy silver shells to start his own bakery. Could Newt have placed a port key charm on it, believing that there might come a time when he'd need to get his muggle bestie to him as quickly as possible? In this scene, could we see Jacob just poor keyed in from getting himself in danger tracking Queenie? And now Newt is saying in skillfully edited dialogue, we're going to go find her together. Are you going somewhere? No, we're going somewhere. Jeez. If everyone's on Queenie's trail, whose trail is she on and why? Can you imagine pitting Legilimens against Seer in a game of cat and mouse? And could this game cross time? Consider the pocket watch. If it belongs to a wizard rather than a muggle, could it be more than a pocket watch? Could it be a 1920s time turner? I've speculated before that with Nicholas Flamel as part of this journey, Rowling would miss an opportunity if she didn't utilize his long memory. Grindelwald may have been time traveling to seek out the Deathly Hallows or other weapons, and Flamel could have caught glimpses of him throughout the centuries. I know this seems a bit out there, but in this one fleeting scene, could there be two hints of time travel? I know this might be stretching a bit, but on closer examination of that postcard, there is one odd element for a card sent in 1927. I found the cards most likely match online, linked below to a lot of great postcards of old Paris. Notice you can see more clearly this wheel in this image but it's there in the card Newt is holding as well. The only problem is that this grand wheel, which was constructed for the 1900 World's Fair, 
was torn down in 1920. Now, that's close enough in time that it probably means nothing. Perhaps the graphic artist Mina Lima didn't notice the wheel had been torn down by the date of the film, or didn't think it important, or explained it away as postcards not updating their pictures frequently. Or maybe it means that the unofficial complete cast list released on Reddit and reported by the Leaky Cauldron, which included unspeakables, may have been true. Many fans have long noted the TARDIS-like dimensions of Newt's case. It's bigger on the inside. But are we now seeing possibilities that it has time and space travel as well? Plus, we have a curious Whovian type statue. Unfortunately, these are a lot of questions and theories based on a rather unclear image. After all, if the golden object on the floor is indeed Tina's ne necklace, that would definitely send Newt off after her in a hurry of concern. So what do you think? Is this a necklace or a pocket watch? And if the watch, whose do you think it could be? Please share your thoughts in the comments. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss my next video, where I'll explore more about our first trailer. Also, be sure to check out my newest release, Fantastic Secrets Behind Fantastic Beasts, the video book. Like Newt's Trunk, it's a living, expanding assembly of theories and videos that I will update regularly until The Crimes of Grindelwald releases in November. I've linked to it in the description below. Until next time.